Hello everyone and uh, welcome to biology class. I'm Mr. Maya Kevin and I'm going to take you through biology form one. We are starting with the first topic of form one. It's called introduction to biology. So we are going to start with the introduction to biology, the first topic in Form 1. And uh, we go straight away to the definition of biology. What is the definition of biology? What does the term biology mean? So we go to definition. Another definition you say, biology is the study of life. Study of life. Or also you can say biology is the study of living things. Is the study of living living things. So there are two types, there are two definitions of biology. Number one, study of living things, and number two, study of life. When you talk about study of life, it means that biology is going, only going to deal with anything that has life. Anything that can respire, that can uh, reproduce, that can excrete, that can be sensitive to changes in the environment. That's what biology means. And if you see at the second definition, it said biology is the study of living things. That's why I'm saying when you're going to study biology, you're only going to deal with anything that has what? Life. So the word bio we are going to break down biology into two. We have bio, biology. So if we break it into two, we have the word bio. Bio means, bio, sorry, we are, we are going to break down biology, and biology comes from a Greek word. Biology comes from a Greek word. That means bio and logos. Biology comes from Greek word meaning bio and logos. So bio means life. And logos, logos means knowledge. So the word biology, it came from Greek word. Bio and Logos. So we have bio here and we have logos. So bio means bio means life and logos means knowledge. So when we are studying biology, we are going to need to know how we are going to keep ourselves with the knowledge of what? Life and how we can identify and also overcome the changes in the environment and the what? Environmental issues, food issues, medicinal issues. That's why we are going to start what? Bio, that gives us what? Life and logos, the knowledge of life. You cannot survive or you cannot be, stay a healthy life without knowing the concept of the basic skill to keep yourself on the healthy life. So number two, we go to branches of biology. Another subtopic, we go to branches of biology. Branches of biology. Branches of biology, there are so several branches of biology. We have several, several branches or many branches of biology. But we have three main ones. We have three main branches of biology. Number one, it is called zoology. Number one, it is called zoology. 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 It's the study of animals. Study of study of animals. Study of animals. Zoology is the study of animals. And the person who studied zoology is called zoologist. The person who studied zoology, it is called what? He's called zoologist. Zoologist is the person who 
who study zoology. And when he said, when he talk about uh, study of animals, it means all the animals, be it insects, vertebrates, invertebrates, arthropoda, or crustaceans, all of those are what? Animals. Anything that can move from one point to another, that's called locomotion. The person who are going to study all of those are called what? Zoologists. And the study is called zoology. Number two branch is called botany. Branch number two, it's called botany. Botany is the study. Is the study of plants. Botany is the study of plants. And the person who study botany is called botanist. Is called botanist. The person who study botany is called botanist. And when you talk about study of plants, you are going to see those plants that can bear fruits and plants that cannot bear fruits. Plants that produce fruits through pollination and others they don't go through pollination. For an example, bananas, they produce fruits without uh, the process of fertilization and the process is called what? Parthenocopy. While those uh, animals, you have those animals that can give viable uh, offspring without the process of, without the process of fertilization and the process is called parthenogenesis. That's why you are going to study the study of what? Bot botany to tell us which plants we want to know the male part of a plant and female part of a plant. So for you to know all those, you have to go to university, then you start botany, and you become what? A botanist. Then number three main branch is called microbiology. Microbiology. Microbiology is the study of microscopic things. Study of microscopic things. Is the study of microscopic things. When you talk about microscopic things, these are tiny specimens or objects, animals, that, or tiny organisms that cannot be seen with the naked eye. So, microbiology is the study of microscopic things. The word microscopic means that we need the help of microscope for us to be able to do or to see the organism. So, from the word micro comes from the word something very small or tiny that cannot be seen with what? Our naked eyes. An example of these microscopic things, it's a bacteria, amoeba, fungi, viruses, that these are things that you cannot see with our naked eye. We need the help of what? Microscope to be able to magnify them and to get the correct resolution. Ability to distinguish the two distinct organisms. So, these are the three main branches of biology. These are the three. These are the three main branches of biology. So, in exam, we'll always be asked, give three main branches of biology. Don't be twisted or don't get confused. There are only three main branches of biology. That is zoology, study of animal, and the person who study zoology is called a zoologist. And number two, you have botany, the study of plants. And the person who study botany is called botanist. And number three, we have microbiology. And the person who study microbiology it's not well and fine that we call them we call them microbiology also we just told them microbiology so these are the three main branches of biology though we have other branches of biology there are so many so we go to other branches of biology other branches of biology other branches of biology. Number one, 
we have taxonomy. Taxonomy. Number one branch is called taxonomy. And the person who study taxonomy is called taxonomist. Taxonomist. We are on the other branches of biology. Remember, when we are starting, we said we have three main branches, zoology, botany, and microbiology. But here, we are on other branches of biology. And number one, it is all taxonomy. And I said the person who studied taxonomy is called taxonomist. So, definition of taxonomy, study of classification of organism. Study of classification of organism. So, definition is a study of classification. Of organism. Study of classification of organism. When I talk about classification of organism, we are going to group we are going to group different organisms to the different groups depending on their structural and behavioral differences. When we talk about structural differences, we have organisms or animals with limbs and animals without limbs. We have animals with compound eyes and animals with what? Sim simple eyes. We have animals that are, are vertebrates and we have those ones that are what Inver invertebrates so we are going to classify them to different what groups and also behavioral groups number two we have cytology 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 and the person who studies cytology is called cytologist to cytologist. We have number two branch, other branch of biology, number two around the cytology. And I say the person who study cytology is called cytologist. So what is the definition of cytology? We are going to direct to the definition of cytology. And cytology are being told is the study of cells is the study of cells. Is the study of cells. Cytology is the study of cells. So, in this regard, we, are, we will be able to see it at form one level. We will be able to see how the animal cells look like and how the plant cell looks like. We have the cell that has double membrane and we have the cell that has single membrane. We have a cell that is irregular in shape and a cell that is irregular in shape. So the differences, for you to know the differences between the cells, we have the cells that are prokaryotic and we have the cells that are eukaryotic. Prokaryotic are those cells that have their nucleus are not enveloped or their nucleus are not enveloped with a cell membrane, are not enclosed with a, within a cell membrane. We call them prokaryotic cells. And we have eukaryotic cells. I write the hit here. We have prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So I say prokaryotic nucleus have no cell nucleus have no cell membrane. Lack nucleus lack cell membrane. Nucleus lack cell membrane. And eukaryotic, we say nucleus have cell nucleus have cell membrane. And I demonstrate it here. So when you talk about prokaryotic and eukaryotic, if this is our cell. We have two types of cells here. I'll call these ones cell A and this one cell B. So, on our prokaryotic cells, we are going to have a nucleus. And this is a cell membrane. But you see, in, the nucleus are not enclosed. 
they are just like that within the cytoplasm. But in a eukaryotic, we have a cell, A, B here, and we have nucleus. And you can see the nuclear, it's enclosed within nuclear membrane. This is what you call nuclear membrane. This is the nuclear membrane, and this is what? Cell membrane. And now, here is when you have what? Nucleus. So get the difference. In exam, you'll be asked, name the part label A or X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. Be able to give the difference. We have nuclear membrane and we have nucleolus. Then you have what? Cell membrane. So in prokaryotic, when you talk about prokaryotic, always know that their nucleus are not enclosed within a cell membrane. And in a eukaryotic, keep in mind that their nucleus are enclosed with, with, with what? A nuclear membrane. So that's the study of cytology. And the person who studies cytology is called cytologist. Number three, we have biochemistry. Biochemistry. We have biochemistry. And the person who study biochemistry is called biochemist. The person who study biochemistry is called biochemist. So what is biochemist? The study, number, number I say other branches of biology is called Number third, the third one is biochemistry, and the person who studied biochemistry is called biochemist. And what's the definition of biochemistry? We are being told, study of chemical changes inside living organism. Study of chemical changes. Study of chemical changes inside living organism. study of chemical changes inside living organism. Study of chemical changes inside the living organisms. All the chemical changes that takes place inside your body, it is studied under biochemistry. And uh, as you know, we say that uh, there's a branch of, uh, there's a characteristic of living thing that's called respiration. And we're being told, it's the chemical breakdown of food in the body cell to release energy. So those chemicals and those chemical changes that take place in the body, all of them, when you group them together, you call it what? Biochemistry. Then we have entomology. Entomology. We have entomology. A person, the person who study entomology is called entomologist. The person who study entomology is called entomologist. The person who study entomology is called entomologist. So what is entomology? It's the study of insects. Study of insects. It's the study of insects. So if you want to know all the types of insects that exist in this earth, all the type of insect you study entomology and you become entomologist. And by here, you'll be able to know the different types of insects and their usefulness in the life of a living organism. Then we have genetics. Genetics, another branch of biology is called genetics. And the person who study genetics is called genetists. Geneticists. It's called geneticist. That's the person who study genetics. And the definition of genetics is the study of inheritance. A study of inheritance and variation among organisms. Study of inheritance and variation among organisms. Study of inheritance and variation 
among organisms. So in genetics, it's a, it's a topic in form for the first topic in form for biology is called genetics. And here is where, where you are going to be taught on how you inherited some genes from your parents. And uh, when you talk about variation, you find out that in a family of six, some are tall, others are what? Short. Others are light skinned and others are what? Dark skinned. So when others are tall, others short, dark skin, light skin, we call it variation. You are varied. But when you talk about inheritance, you look for the things that you inherited from your parent. If your father is dark skin and your mother is light skin, you, and you were born as what? Dark skin. You took the genes from your father. That's what you look at yeah? the genetics, the study of inheritance and variation, what you inherited from your parents. Then the last branch is called parasitology. 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 Under parasitology, you are being told the person who study parasitology is called parasitologist. Parasitologist. The person who study parasitology is called parasitologist. And what is the study of uh, what is the definition of parasitology? Is the study of parasites. Study of parasites. The study of parasites. So examples of parasites that you know, you have a example, you have a mosquito that it sucks your blood and you get nothing from mosquito. It gives you plasmodium, then you suffer from malaria. That is what? Para parasite. Number two, example of parasite, we have a, a tick on a cow that sucks the blood from the cow and a cow benefits nothing from the what? From the tick. That's what you mean by what? Para parasite. Anything that depends on you for survival and you don't depend on it. That's what you call by what? Parasitology. Yes, on it. Next branch, can you pause? Okay, now we go to importance of biology. Importance of biology. Importance of biology. So, before we started on the importance of biology, you have started what is biology, the biology, how we came out with the word biology, you said it's from Greek word, we went to the expression of biology, we said bio means life, logos means knowledge. Now, we are studying life and we are keeping ourselves with knowledge of life. So, we went to branches of biology, we said there are three main ones, and we have other branches of biology which we have discussed. So we are going to importance of biology. Where should you study biology in the high school? So number one, it's a career subject. Number one, it's a career. It's a career subject. When you talk about career subject, you can be a farmer, you can be a doctor, you can be a teacher, you can be a pharmacist through biology. So you say it's a career subject such as such as medicine. Number one, such as medicine, agriculture. Such as agriculture, health, forest conservation, forest conservation, also wildlife conserv conservation. Wildlife conservation. So when you study biology, you are going to keep yourself with the following skills and you become, it's a career subject. That means that if you don't become a biology teacher like me, you can become a doctor or you can do farming. Also, you can be able to conserve our environment by conserving forests and also wildlife. Number two, equips learners with scientific skills. We get scientific skills we get 
scientific skills. And when we talk about scientific skills, examples of these scientific skills are identifying, e.g., identifying, e.g., identifying, number two, observing, observing, measuring, analyzing, and evaluating data. And let us discuss them. So when you study biology, you have that skills of identifying. So you can identify this one is what? An insect, and this one is what? Uh, a milliped. Number two, you can identify this one is a plant, and this one is what? An animal. Number two, observing. Now, we want to observe them through the microscope. The features that are found on organism A and the features that are found on organism B. Number two, measuring. We want to see, for an example, we want to see the length of your hinge bone, hapa. The, the length of one humerus, in how many centimeters? Or the length of one cell, in how many micro, micrometers? Then we go to analyzing. We come to analyze. When we analyze, we already we know this organism has the following characteristics. Then we evaluate the data by comparing the differences of one organism with the other organisms. Number three, it fights when you study biology. It helps, number three, help in fighting, help to fight ozone, help to fight ozone layer, help to fight ozone layer from depletion through, from depletion, help to fight ozone layer from depletion through various from depletion through various international agreements. Through various international agreements. That's when you come and see, you find out that Kenya is working with what? Ethiopia to fight ozone layer. Or if, even if it comes to disease. You see, like now, coronavirus in Kenya. Find out that uh, Kenya is working with what? Other nations, such as that is UN, to able to fight towards the disease. Help in solving environmental problems, number four. To solve environmental problems. Helps to solve environmental problems, such as such as food shortage, help to solve environmental problems such as food shortage, poor health, that's another one, poor health, then environmental, and also how to conserve environmental problems, e.g. pollution. So when you study biology, will be able to control the following, that is number one, food, food shortage. Now, if we are planting, for example, cassava, and we found that the cassava is not working on this area, we are able to test the pH or the, pH, the soil uh, of the specific area, and we found out that the cassava cannot work here, but sugar cane can be grown here. We talk about poor health, when you study biology, you will be able to know what you are required to do to stay a healthy life. And water pollution, examples are uh, industrial waste. When you study biology, you know that uh, this industrial waste has to be recycled or has to be treated first before being disposed to the water. That's what we are going to do to be able to fight what? Pollution. Then we go to characteristics of living things. Characteristics of living things.
of living things. Characteristics of living things is also known as the behavior of living things. What living things does in the daily life basis. For an example, what do you do? If I, I may ask you, what do you do daily in your daily life routine? The things that you do when you wake up and when you sleep, what are the things that uh, you do? Number one, we have uh, respiration. Respi respiration. From the, the respiration comes from the word respire. Respire. So respiration is the chemical breakdown of food. Is the chemical is the chemical breakdown of food in the body cells to release energy. It's the chemical breakdown of food in the body cells to release energy. When you talk about it's the chemical breakdown of food, another name of food is substrate. So when you take pilau, that's a meat and rice combined, Rice contains carbohydrate and uh, meat has protein. So when you, when you eat them, the process of digestion is going to take place. And that food that you have ate is going to be broken down in the body cells. And the organelles that are going to work on them are called mitochondria. Then after some time, you start getting what? Energy. Maybe you're exhausted, you are tired. So when you eat, you start gaining what? Energy. That energy you get from the food is called what? The process called respiration. It's the chemical breakdown of food to release energy. Number two, we have reproduction. Number two, we have reproduction, the subtopic cause characteristic. of living things. The subtopic was characteristics of living things. Number one, we discussed respiration, and I said it's the chemical breakdown of food in the body cells to release energy. Number two, we have reproduction. Reproduction. Reproduction is the process by which mature organism, I say the word only mature organism, are able to give birth to a viable what? offspring or to a fertile offspring. It's the process by which mature organism can interbreed to give a fertile offspring. The process The process by which mature organisms interbreed to give viable or fertile offsprings. So, when a mature female Mates with a mature male, they are able to do what? To produce a fertile offspring. When you talk about fertile offspring, it's the only offspring that came from the same species. E.g., human beings are Homo sapiens sapiens. So when Homo sapiens sapiens mates with the Homo sapiens sapiens, they are able to give a, a, a fertile what? offspring. But we have organisms that can mate and they cannot produce what? A fertile offspring. Like we take a, a, a leopard and a lion. Leopard and lion, they belong to the different species. So when they mate, they cannot produce what? A viable offspring because they belong to the different species. Number two, number three, sorry. Number three 
it's called gaseous exchange gaseous exchange gaseous exchange is now that process where we take in oxygen and give out carbon for oxide so in the process is the exchange is the exchange of oxygen and carbon four oxide carbon four oxide is the exchange of oxygen and carbon four oxide in our body so the exchange when you breathe in when you take in oxygen and you give out carbon four oxide we call it gaseous exchange and this oxygen that you are taking in is the one required for respiration to take place when the food is chemically broken down in the presence of oxygen the food will be completely broken down but when the food is broken down without oxygen the food will not be completely be broken down then number four we have irritability irritability is also called sensitivity irritability is also called sensitivity and this one is the ability of living organism to perceive changes that are found within the environment ability of living organism to perceive changes in the surrounding environment so this ability where by now your body can detect either there is a temperature rise or temperature decrease pressure touch or water that's the ability of what the plant to plant and animals for this for this example you have been told that uh, plants are less sensitive to changes in the environment than animals animals respond quickly while plants respond slowly that's what you call irrita irritability then you have growth and development growth and development number five growth and development in growth and development we started with the respiration and we said it's the chemical breakdown of food to release energy now the food that you have taken is the one required for you to grow and develop so growth is the increase growth is the increase in length of an organism so if you grow from one feet to five feet five feet that is what growth and development is the increase in complexity if you are a man you start growing beards your voice deepens and you your gonads mature that's what we call what development so the difference between development and growth is that growth is the increase in length but uh, development is the increase in complexity now you mature up you start turning from boy to a man or from a girl to a woman that's what you call by what development so under that you say growth is the increase in length of an organism while uh, development is the change in complexity of an organism is the change of the complex complexity of an organism then the last one we discuss movement number 6 movement stroke locomotion movement stroke locomotion movement plants move but 
loco uh, they don't locomote. It's only animals that locomote. So it's the ability. of an organism, especially animals. Especially animals. To move from one region to another. So Movement, when the plants, plants move, but they don't locomote. The only difference is if this is a plant, it swings its branches like this. So the branches are swinging, we say that, those are, that's what you call by movement. But locomotion is the change in position from one point to another point. We call it locomotion. E.g., animals locomote, but plant does not locomote. Plant move, but animal locomote. So that's what we have for today. And uh, thank you for your time. See you next time. Thank you.